Are you looking for a short tutorial on how to use UFile online for your 2022 taxes? In that case, you're at the right place. Now, keep in mind, I am not a legal professional, so I'm not a tax advisor or financial advisor, so I cannot give you tax or financial advice, but I can certainly show you how to use the software itself. Now, before we get started, this video assumes that you're familiar with the basics of Canadian taxes. If you're not, then have a look at this short video over here that explains Canadian tax basics. Before we get started, however, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom of their website and look at the subsection here that says file for free, you might actually be eligible to file your taxes 100% for free using UFile online. There are four instances where that actually is the case. Number one, if you're a post-secondary student, so in that case, just make sure to use this particular code over here, regardless of what your income is. Number two, if you have a very simple tax return, so it consists only of a T4 or maybe a T4P for pensions or T4OAS, for instance, and you must only have standard non-refundable tax credits and have no other deductions or credits such as RS RSP contributions, charitable donations, or medical expenses. So in that case, it's considered a simple tax return. You can definitely file for free. In the third instance, you can file for free if it's this literally the first time that you're filing your income taxes in Canada. So that's one option as well. And lastly, if you're low income, so if your total family income is below $20,000. In every single one of those four instances, you can file for free. Now, let's get started. So let's log in. By default, this is the screen you should get to once you're logged in. Make sure you don't mistakenly click on UFile T2. Again, this is for incorporated businesses only. Go back to the T1 if that's what you want to do. Select your year that you want to file the taxes for. In this case, I'm going to select 2022. Click Go. It'll create the new tax file here. And now we're going to launch it. Now, this is called the interview process. So I'm going to start it. The interview process collects information about yourself, if you have a spouse, etc 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 so it's fairly standard it and then the software maintains this information for future years so that you don't have to re-enter this every single time so enter your information here social insurance number and so on and so forth if this is the first time you're filing taxes in canada you likely won't have a net file access code so in that case just leave it blank this code is received from the cra once you file your taxes for the first time you're going to receive this in your notice of assessment and you can use it uh, going forward now, you can still use the software to file your taxes. It's just you won't be able to submit your tax return online. So at the very end, once you enter everything, you will be able to generate a PDF, print it out, and then the software will tell you exactly where to mail it to. Next, select your province. Depending on what you select here, you will notice the different changes to the forms over here on the left-hand side. So let's say if I say, for instance, that I live in Quebec, uh, mention whether you're married or not. So let's say you're single. Again, fill this out whichever way it works for you and then press next. And notice that now, because I said I live in Quebec, there's a whole bunch of additional forms that pop up that are specific for Revenue Quebec. Obviously, in your case, select whatever province you actually reside in. Select your language of communication. Then mention whether this is the very first time that you're filing taxes or not, and whether you have property that was worth more than $100,000 Canadian in 2022. And also mention whether you've sold your principal property or principal residence last year and whether you're a diplomat for a different country. Mention whether you're a Canadian citizen over here. Now, read the terms and conditions regarding on how the CRA will be communicating with you. Agree to them. And then enter an email address where you want the CRA to send you emails to. It's obviously entirely up to you what email you're going to be using. However, there's been a significant increase in scammers pretending to be from the CRA. So if you're only using one email across all of your bank accounts, all of your social media platforms, it's probably not the safest thing to do. So if you don't already have one, I'd recommend maybe having a look at an encrypted email provider such as Proton Mail over here. There's a free account option. It only gives you one gig. However, how many emails are you planning on receiving from the CRA every year? So I'm fairly certain one gig is plenty for that purpose. Anyway, enter whatever email you want over here, then click next. This is the first section that talks about Quebec specifically. So is this the first time that you're filing taxes in Quebec? Are you a person living alone? Again, select whatever applies to your specific case. Are you planning on requesting the accelerated refund of, of, with your Quebec return? Now, if you're uncertain about any of these questions, just click on the question mark that is right next to the drop down menu. So over here, and then basically it'll tell you exactly what that particular refund is and so on and so forth. Okay. So select whatever makes sense. Did you sell any virtual currency last year? Again, select whatever makes sense for you. 
And then do you plan on applying for the solidarity tax credit? So again, same idea. If you're not certain what that is, you can read a bit more about it here. Now, specifically for the solidarity tax credit, in case you're not sure if you're eligible for it, these are the eligibility criteria. Again, link in the description down below if you want to learn more about it. Then select whether you want to apply for the Quebec tax shield and whether you're okay with Revenue Quebec contacting you only uh, electronically. So select yes, if that's the case. And then again, good idea to have an encrypted email uh, service over here. Next, this subsection talks about the Quebec prescription drug plan. So select whatever applies to you. Next, this here basically asks you whether you want to file online using NetFile. It's recommended just leave it at yes, if eligible. If you're not eligible because you don't have a, a NetFile number to file with the federal government or the Quebec government, the system will let you know. So just leave it at yes, if eligible. Next. This subsection here asks you whether you want the CRA to autofill your return. In most cases, the CRA probably has the vast majority of your tax forms already on file. So by selecting this option, it'll automatically pre-fill the vast majority, if not even all your tax forms for you. It's entirely up to you if you want to do that or not, but it definitely saves you a lot of time. It is still your legal responsibility to verify that the information that the autofill my return setup generates is actually correct. So select whatever you want. This is the equivalent of the autofill my return, but just for Quebec. So again, same idea, select whether you want that information to be automatically filled or not, but it's still your responsibility to verify that the information is correct. Next, this brings us to the CRA express notice of assessment section. So again, take advantage of this new service to receive your notice of assessment immediately after filing your return. Again, read the details and decide whether you want to use it or not, then click next. And that's pretty much it for the initial pre-setup. And now this is the general uh, interview setup. So by default, it assumes for most people that they have a T4, so employment income over here. Obviously, if you don't have a T4, then don't select that. But if you do, leave it there. Uh, did you have any form of T3s, T5s, or any form of investment income? I select that. Did you have any medical expenses or have you contributed to your RSP, etc. So let's say you haven't contributed to your RSP, but you do have medical expenses. Let's also uh, say that you, in this case, do you have any prior information for previous years? Then over here, uh, have you had any eligible moving expenses? Those would apply if you've moved at least 40 kilometers or more closer to your place of work or full-time study. Did you have additional deductions and credits such as school supply credit or home buyer's amount? So again, depending on whatever your situation is, select that or not. Oh, another thing actually I, I forgot to mention before, obviously if you're a student, make sure to select your tuition education textbooks loan. So th these are your uh, T2202 uh, forms. And if you've received a scholarship or a fellowship, that will typically show up on a T4A. If it does show up on a T4A, despite the fact that here they mentioned that this is in the pension subsection, if you're a student that received a scholarship or fellowship, you're likely going to be receiving a T4A, so select that as well. Also, have you had any form of rental property income? If so, click here. Are you self-employed? So do you drive an Uber? If so, click here, for example. I'll cover how to enter self-employment business income as well as rental property income in a separate video. Otherwise, this one will become way too long. But yes, we'll make sure that whatever else I haven't mentioned here that, that might be relevant to you, that you actually select those subsections. Whatever you're selecting here, as soon as I'm going to be uh, clicking next, you'll see on the left-hand side, new sections will be created and old sections that I no longer have selected will disappear. So there we go. So now we are able to create as many T4s as we want. Now it's incredibly important that you create the correct subtype of T4. If you happen to be living in Quebec and working in Quebec, you likely have received a T4 with an RL1. So in that case, select the first option here. If you're living outside of Quebec, select just T4 outside Quebec, select this option over there, right? So click here, there you go. Now enter the employer name. So let's say employer one. <laughs> Then all you have to do is copy the information from the respective boxes in the correct subsection here. So copy your employment income from box 14 from your T4 into box 14 in the, in the software here. That's all you really have to do. And if you do uh, have an RL1 as well, you will notice that those boxes, boxes B, C, D, etc., will also show up here and you only have to enter the information once because box 17 in a T4 is the same information as box B on an RL1. So 
just copy that information. It's as simple as that. And if you've chosen to use the autofill my return, this information should already be mostly filled in or entirely filled in for you. All you have to do is just verify that the information is correct and the numbers match. All right. If you click next on the bottom there, it all, all of a sudden brings you to the T4A to the next subsection. If you have multiple T4s, you can click over here to go back and create as many additional T4s as you want. Or maybe the very first T4 that I showed you was a T4 with an RL1 where you have uh, QPP, Quebec Pension Plan contributions, which is standard for most people working in Quebec. However, in certain cases, maybe you received a T4 with an RL1, but you made CPP contributions for whatever reason, right? So again, make sure you're selecting the correct subtype of T4 that, that it matches the one that you actually received. So just look at whatever you've received and create the same form in the software and you can create as many as you want. So let's say I have a second employer. You will notice now the second employer, employer number one is over there, uh, you know, and let's say employer two. It would help if I knew how to spell. There you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. And then you enter all that information here. T4A. So in this instance, as I said, it's probably going to be other income in the form of a scholarship. So I'm, I'm guessing here this, this individual is actually a student that got a scholarship. So all you have to do, same idea, you just enter the information from the T4s. I'm not going to be showing you that information because every single person will have something completely different, but I'm fairly certain you're capable of copying, pasting basically information from one form to another. There we go. And then start entering information if you have received a T3, so any form of trust income. And you don't have to be a fancy rich person to, to have income from a trust. Some mutual funds, some ETFs are actually invested or structured as trust in certain cases, so you might be receiving T3s. But they're not as common, to be honest. In most cases, you probably have received a T5. So you can click on there. So a T5 will be issued by your bank or investment institution once you have at least $50 and profits in that, in that particular year. So those $50 can be in the form of interest payments in non-registered accounts. It could be a mix of dividends, capital gains, and interest, or a mix of everything else, right? So all you have to do is just enter the information again, copy whatever you have on your forms in here. An important thing to keep in mind is that registered accounts do not generate any tax slips. So don't start freaking out if you haven't received a T5 or a T3 from your TFSA or your RSP, that's normal, all right? Now we can click either next, and that brings us to this subsection here, or if you had interest income or dividend income that was less than $50 during, uh, during the year, technically speaking, you still have to report that. So I would recommend that you do so. And this is where you would report that. Basically you'd say interest income, not on information slip, press next. See whether any of these apply to you. If not, press next. So this is where you would enter your medical expenses. So let's say on January 5th of last year, you actually went to have a dental cleaning. There you go. And here you can enter the amount that you paid after the reimbursement. So for example, if it costs you $100 upfront, but your insurance reimbursed you $80, the, the sum that you can claim is the $20 that you actually ended up paying out of pocket in the end. So that's the sum that you enter here. Now, if you have 20 additional or 50 additional medical expenses, just keep on pressing the plus button and add the information here for every single one of them. Verify that the other options don't apply to you, then press next. Now, this is where you enter your tuition tax credits. So again, if you've received a T2202, including an RL8, just copy paste the information that you have in those specific boxes. I know it's kind of boring. I keep on repeating the same thing over and over again, but it's literally that simple, right? So I'll let you do your own here. Now, if you've had moving expenses, now it depends on whether you want to use the simplified uh, form or the uh, more complex form. It also depends on whether you're a full-time student or whether you're a worker. So again, select whichever one makes sense to you and then follow the prompts. It's fairly straightforward. And then obviously now it asks you whether you have a spouse and, you know, kind of reminds you that there's a whole bunch of different benefits that get shared. So by the way, if you do have a spouse, you can add a spouse at any point in time by just clicking the add spouse button up here. And then that will generate a new form that pretty much has the exact same stuff that we've, we've seen so far. So you have to re-enter all that information for them. And if you have dependent children, you can keep on adding as many as you have <laughs> and then enter the information for them as well. If you end up having a balance owing, you can mention how much the enclosed amount is by clicking here and just following the prompts. It'll ask you if you want to pay the full amount in part or no, make no payment whatsoever. 
if you want to change your direct deposit information that is on file with the, the government, you can click here and that will generate a new form where you can change that. And you can also decide to transfer some of your refund to your spouse if that's what you want. And you can select this option here to enter that information. Then click next. Now this subsection here are the MaxBack controls. So MaxBack is the proprietary algorithm that UFile uses that enables them to try to give you the largest possible refund. So it'll try to run different numbers multiple times to try to optimize your tax refund. So it's up to you if you want to tell it exactly what to do or you just let the software basically decide what makes the most sense, right? So you can play around with these, with these settings here. You can also use the search function over here in case you've missed any particular tax forms that you weren't able to create or find in the system itself. You can use the search form to find them. Then click on review. This is where it'll generate your actual tax return in a PDF format. So then it's up to you whether you want to save it or just print it. Uh, obviously, if you're able to file online, you can then go to step five and actually file online. Otherwise, yeah, you just have to print out the tax forms and mail them wherever the system tells you that you need to mail them for, to then you will be receiving a confirmation from both the federal and the Quebec government if you happen to be submitting in Quebec, confirming that you've submitted your taxes. And that's pretty much it.